what's up everybody i haven't made a video in a while but doing something local i am here in the south side of chicago neighborhood of pullman as the sign suggests oh, right there oh, yeah um in front of what used to be the pullman railroad factory about 100 well it closed in 1955 but a building that's been sitting in disrepair for about for decades i think at least since 1955 and part of kind of the anchor of the whole pullman community which is that way and that way but the whole community but including that building is a city state and national landmark and since 2015 it's been part of the actual national park service so as i walk around you'll see um, actual u.s park rangers which is interesting to see that on the south side but today's the grand opening it's a labor day weekend this neighborhood it's a big part of late u.s labor history you know we got all the people out so a little bit of history of the actual community in the late 19th century george pullman uh owned a uh, rail car factory company um the pullman company and uh he decided to move all of his operations to this area south of chicago and um i don't know if he was the first to come up with the idea of the company town but he built a company or a town i should say called pullman named after him which was built to house his workers made specifically for work for the workers and this part right here is the original section of Pullman that was built you see the Florence Hotel here so the, the community had pretty much was self-sufficient had everything um, the workers needed as far as electricity plumbing just all the amenities that a family could need so when the town was built it was applauded for its beauty its design all those different things but it also was criticized for being a bit autocratic anti-democratic i mean you have one man one company basically owning an entire town and all that came to head during the pullman riots when you had a decline in an industry basically a depression in the late 19th century and pullman laid off a bunch of workers or dropped wages as well but he didn't decrease the rent of the uh in the community so that pretty much led to the pullman riots so the pullman strike uh which was you know a combination of high rents and low wages and again pullman pretty much was the end all be all so i think i forgot how many people were killed during the riots but a fair amount of people were killed and eventually led to the city of chicago annexing pullman and selling the um the homes to the actual owners so they were able to buy their property and i guess through the years it passed down through ownership go this way but this is definitely a distinct red brick green red and green it's like the neighborhood colors all the garages I don't know if it's like a part of the covenant that you have to keep that aesthetic like, I don't think anybody could paint their house like blue or something around here, but. See, 
the elementary school down there. Some cool artwork. Some pretty cool artwork. Used to be a cafe here. I think it closed down since the pandemic, but perfect little neighborhood cafe. This block is a pretty good uh, example of what um, the neighborhood kind of represents. Red row houses. All the house, the company workers. So you got the National Park Ranger here, so this whole community, I think neighborhood now, is a part of the national, I don't know, it's a national park. Not just the building, but the whole neighborhood. So, I don't know if that's the first neighborhood national park, but it's just kind of interesting to see park rangers in the summer, on the south side. You know. Google this says that this is the national monument but it's been sitting here in kind of in this state for you know decades and decades so I'm not sure what they're gonna put here but you know this is uh, the kind of only multi-family home housing like this unique little arcade here uh, kind of show the diversity of like, the different kind of housing in Pullman that would house its workers. You had the single family housing and you had the this little multi-family unit, unit here. A perfect example of uh, gentrification and maintaining the aesthetics of a neighborhood. Well, I answered my question pretty much. Does the any new buildings have to maintain the aesthetic of the neighborhood? And of course it does. It, so you can see these are new townhomes, condos, red brick, green awning. So it has to maintain that Pullman look. This is the uh, opening entrance to what well, I can't remember the name of the building. I'm sure I'll see it in the museum or whatever. But this house, like a huge mall, post office, kind of like the community, like had everything hospital, bunch of stuff. Good morning. This building took up the entire block all the way to 112th Street. And so only this portion still remains, but this is the south part of Pullman, the original part. There's actually another part of Pullman, which is north of the clock tower that hasn't been as gentrified at all. Honestly, it hasn't been as preserved as the other part of Pullman. Still maintains that character of the housing but 
the demographically it's a total different situation as you can see here this is pretty much i don't know maybe 50 60 percent white um, but the north part of pullman is about 95 percent african-american uh, but it's still a part of the pullman community so we're gonna head that way now uh, volunteer forms for the uh grand opening tomorrow hey i wonder if i should pull this out it's probably too late now volunteers needed this is definitely still part of the neighborhood i guess you could say this is black pullman but the row houses that are so unique to the neighborhood still exist on this side but it's a completely different like makeup and this is sort of like a famous arch and you can tell you see the uh, red black and green flags here so I'm not sure if this part of Pullman is a part of the National Historic uh, preservation area but I believe it has to be because you know it's pretty much the same as the other side so you know just see you could tell here what's been redone and what hasn't but I don't know if I can walk straight through that but So I'm here in front of the A. Philip Randolph uh, Museum. And who is A. Philip Randolph? He was a African-American labor unionist who pretty much formed the first black union in the United States. Uh, and that union was Pullman Porters, which at that time is was the largest one of the largest employers of African Americans here in Chicago at least but pretty much uh, probably the country as well and Pullman porters are basically uh, like the service workers on the Pullman rail cars so they have a museum dedicated to that aspect of the community's uh, history and this one's been here for a while but um yeah this is north pullman this is pretty much the north end of pullman on 104th and maryland right next to corliss high school so definitely i don't think it's still open right now but definitely worth checking out i've been here before but um there's the monument So I was going to get some food and I saw this little uh, picture here of the uh, Pullman Rail Porters and it made me think of a story that was told to me. My uh, great, great grandfather was a Pullman Porter. He worked as a rail porter and his middle name, you no, know, my, my great grandfather and my grandfather both had the middle name of Paley. Now, the porter workers worked in the rail car. They were servicemen. They serviced the uh, patrons of the rail car, helped them with their bags, food, all the types of stuff. And the story goes is my great great grandfather, Seaborn Stevens, was working and struck up a conversation with one of the patrons, which was a Jewish guy. He struck up a conversation. And somehow or another, my great-great-grandfather told uh, the patron that, the Jewish guy, hey, I'm expecting a son on the way, you know, through their conversation. And I can't remember exactly how much the amount was, but the Jewish guy said, I'll give you X amount of dollars to name your child after me. And his name was Paley. So that's what he did. He gave his, he named his son Reginald Paley Stevens. 
and my great grandfather hated that name so much that he stuck it to my grandfather and then he named him Reginald Paley Stevens and then my grandfather hated that name so much he said I'm gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna stick my kids with it so yeah I'm gonna end this video here bank Pullman Bank used to be Pullman Bank now it's a US Bank there's a there's a, a, a green uh, Gotham Greens which is like a uh, greenhouse um, Whole Foods distribution plant is there there's a Walmart a bunch of other stores so restaurants it's black owned right there but police station I'm sure they're gonna put something here in this little parcel so 